Hello, welcome to this edition of Museum Moments. Today, and actually it's Mar March, March 7th, sorry, it's March 2nd, and March 8th is uh, International Women's Day. Um, and this was actually an event that was founded hundreds of years, hundred, this is gonna be a tough day today, guys, 110 years ago. Um, to support women and to explore issues that women found important in any given age, any given time. Um, so in thinking about International Women's Day and what is happening in our communities, I thought what better time than talk about hippies. So first let's do a little bit on International Women's Day. International Women's Day was founded in 1910, but the first International Women's Day took place in um, in 1908, and it wasn't international at that point, it was a group of 15,000 women coming together to say, we need better jobs, we need more, um, we need better pay, actually, shorter work hours, we need the right to vote. 1908 is still uh, 11 years before, or 10 years before women had the right to vote more. Um, and so all of this is happening, and women are, are joining together to say, we're going to fight for, for these rights. And as it grew, it grew into not just a group of American women, but women all over the world coming together to say, what do women need together? So this year, the theme of International Women's Day is choose to challenge. You can hashtag any stories that you find to be central to this topic is choose to challenge on social media. And here's how they describe that theme. A challenged world is an alert world. Individually, we're all responsible for our own thoughts and actions all day, every day. We can all choose to challenge and call out gender, bi gender bias and inequality. We can all choose to seek out and celebrate women's achievements. Collectively, we can help create an inclusive world. From challenge comes change. So let's all choose to challenge. And the organization and program that I'm choosing to address today, I think speaks to this mission perfectly. That they are women who saw a need to connect with other women, to build resources, and to build up communities through the women themselves that live in those communities. So let's talk about Hippie, which is a interesting and fun name for a uh, organization. Um, and if you think about hippie, you're like, oh, hippie, of course. Uh, you know, you think trippy, you think, you know, the 1960s, you think peace, love, and happiness. Hippie actually stands for Home Instruction for Parents of Preschool Youngsters, Hippie. And it's an organization, and we'll get to its founding in Milwaukee, but it was founded in Israel initially. And let's just go through a little bit about the protocol of what hippie does. Um, it is a 30 week program. So the families that commit to being hippie are making a serious, significant investment of their time. And th it's generally for families with kids from two, ages two to five, and it encourages parent participation. And it's not about, you know, just the kids are involved, it's the parents are involved and they are going to engage for 15 to 20 minutes every day with reading or some sort of activity and learning with their ch children. Once a week, they are going to meet with someone from the hippie local office, who is always a parent that has gone through the program. And they're provided with books and materials to maintain this environment of learning, to really put them ahead in this. One of the notes that we have is the, the woman reading with her two children um, in the upper right, uh, her name is Tamara, and she was a hippie parent and, you know, became a hippie program director, became uh, part of the program itself after participating in the program, and then went on to work at MPS and later went on and completed several degrees and now runs an early childhood center. So this was not just a moment for her of choosing to challenge. This became, you know, just her family. This became a moment in which she found the ability to change her broader community as well. I just think it's an amazing story. Um, the program itself was founded in Israel and it was founded by this woman, Avima, um, sorry, <laughs> Av Avima Lombard. And the program was came out of a research uh, project out of the National Council of Jewish Women. And, uh, and it initially started as an effort um, to, and her, sorry, Avima Lombard's background was in early childhood education. And her goal was to help parents become involved with their children's education. 
So she says, one thing is clear, parents um, care. And given the opportunity, parents are ready to invest in their children's education. Our work with Hippie is designed to make that possible. And the evidence was that early childhood education programs could help prepare children from low-income families to help succeed in school. We see that in America in terms of programs like Head Start and things like that. But rather than just directing it to the children, having the whole family engaged would create a better overall um, advancement. It, it means that it's not just education for the, the child, it's the whole family is engaged in the process. Um, and and really, it's about making that new, that that kind of warm, that uh, giving parents the resources to engage with the teachers, with um, teachers at their schools, to give them the abilities to, to help their kids with homework, to understand what they need in these environments. In Israel, it was all about immigrants from Northern Africa and the Middle East. Uh, and then each community that Hippie has come to, the community changes, but it really is part of the community that it's serving. So there is some initial success and it started coming to the United States. Um, and one of the things that actually mobilized its growth in the United States and initially comes to Tulsa, Oklahoma in the 1970s, but the, the story actually has a kind of connection to Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton uses this story, used this story at, um, the, uh, the DNC in 2016. He talks about this, but Basically, in 1985, Hillary Clinton was then the first lady of Arkansas, and she had read about Hippie in a newspaper from Florida and felt like it was a really interesting program. And she worked with the Israeli program to bring it to Arkansas. And actually, the national office is still in Arkansas um, and is one of the largest state sites because of this kind of investment. And and it's a really interesting thing that it's, you know, this there's this Israel-Milwaukee uh, Internet America connection, but Hillary Clinton is part of that as well. As groups are deciding to bring them to the country, basically each NCJW chapter, whoever the local affiliate is, needs to figure out how they're going to fund this. It's an expensive program. It costs, I think, about $1,000 for each child. And you want to have a lot of families invested in it. You want to have, you want to build a community. Um, so the effort to bring Hippie to Milwaukee really started in the 1990s by the Milwaukee section of the National Council of Jewish Women. The process took several years because the program needs two big things to launch. You need to have a community organization that's going to help with the kind of framework, the logistics, making sure that you're recruiting people who need it. And you need to have significant funding. The Milwaukee community organization that they partner with is Children's Outing Association, COA, Youth and Family Centers. And they stepped up, they were the local organization. And then the funding came together when a number of national um, and local foundations joined together. But the big ones were the Fleck, the Nathan Cummings, and the Gerber Foundation. In its first year in 1998, 50 families enrolled. So already you're impacting 50 different parts of the community. You're challenging them, you're engaging them, you're giving them tools that they maybe otherwise wouldn't have. And at the end of each year, after they've gone through this incredible 30 week process, there's a graduation, a celebration. Um, so today there are 380 families participating in Hippie from that 50 to 380 and that's each year. Um, and they come together once a month for family gathering nights. They have, it really is part of building that community, having a network, having people together, having uh, community partners, um, parents, partners. So you have the parents who are participating and then you have their parent partners. These are people who've graduated from the program and then help the current parents figure out the program, engage with their kids, engage with the materials. Um, they visit each week. And again, they're committing for that weekly meeting and that 15 to 20 minutes each night of working together on some part of the hippie curriculum. Um, there's so many metrics that show that this succeeds. One is, you know, a 2006, I believe it was a Marquette study found that 71% of hippie 5K students and 73% of hippie first graders were at or above proficient reading level. You know, so they are, they are already, you know, they are giving them that jump start on school. Um, they are, the families are saying that they have better understanding of how to uh, talk to teachers, how to make sure that they're responding, how to make sure they're engaged in their kids' education. And even in a challenging time like COVID and pandemic, 
where you have so many different uh, stressors on families and so many different challenging challenges to engage that Hippie continued to provide interactions through Zoom, through um, outside socially distant uh, family days like this trip to the pumpkin patch. Um, and it really is each year a new community, a new world that gets so much, so many tools. So I just, I just can't say enough about when you're thinking about women and the way in which women can change the world. This is certainly an excellent example of that. It would be out of sorts if I didn't actually give you some opportunities to actually engage with Hippie. If you're interested in volunteering, you can go to NCJW's um, website. It's ncjwmke.org backslash hippie. I'll put these in the chat in the comments. Or if you are a family and you're interested in more information about how to be involved as a family member in Hippie, you can go to COA's website. That's COA slash um, FYC org backslash hippie. I'll put that in the chats as well. And consider this is an awesome organization that has impacted thousands of people in the city and state. And we just, I just wanted to celebrate this in this moment of choose to challenge. These are people who are rising to that occasion and have taken that call and have been doing it for more than 20 years. So as always, I have to have some thank yous to give. This was a great and team effort here to create uh, this was a team effort to create this program. Uh, we had a fabulous intern, Elizabeth, who put together much of this research and presentation. And she worked with two volunteers from NCJW's Milwaukee chapter, Margie Margolis and Linda Frank, to help frame the story. And I want to thank the NCJW chapter in general. Congratulations on your 125th anniversary. As always, thanks to our supporter, Robin Cohen. She's amazing and we really appreciate her. Um, and thanks to you guys for tuning in. Um, next week, we have a really interesting museum moment. We're going to be looking at Yiddish and how it became the kind of language of comedy in some ways, or just the language. Think about all of those Yiddish words that you know, but you're not sure exactly what you, they mean. We're going to talk about those with a scholar named Miriam Isaacs. Have a great week and thanks for sharing this moment with me.